Hey, welcome back to part three of Sport on 7. I'm Tom Bushell. Chris McCarty is coming up as we catch up on all the sport locally over the last seven days. But first, I've been talking to some of the stars from the Red Bull X Fighters who have been showing off in Dubai over the weekend. I spoke to Swiss star Matt Rebaud, a multi-winner at Moto X Freestyle, about being here in Dubai. Well, Matt, welcome to Dubai. Obviously, a big weekend, a big Friday to come for you, isn't it? It's going to be a super event here in Dubai for the Red Bull X Fighter uh, event on Friday. Yeah, for sure. The place, it's uh, very cool. Uh, we just uh, practiced this morning and the track is very nice and uh, we got perfect condition. Uh, weather, it's nice, no wind. And uh, yeah, of course, that will be an amazing event. It's such a fantastic sport to watch, isn't it, of course? so many stunts involved tell me how did you get involved in it at an early age uh, actually I come from uh, motocross when I was uh, young I received my first bike at four years old and uh, pretty much right all my life and now it's 11 years and I'm professional and uh, that's come from my dad my dad was a motocross rider and uh, you know I, it's a sport family away from the actual event on Friday have you had much time to get out into Dubai or into the desert and, and use your bike out there as well because there's so many places here which scenery wise are stunning but great places to ride a bike as well. Yeah I got pretty lucky yesterday I got the teaser jump and we uh, bring the bike like, like uh, the Red Bull Fighters bring the bike to the desert and uh, do some uh, cool uh, photo there. It was super warm it was actually pretty hot but uh, it's amazing to see this place and uh, yeah of course Dubai is it's so crazy and uh, I will uh, after seven I got a little bit time then I will uh, I'll do a little bit vacation on the city. Do you ever get scared in this sport? Uh, yeah, of course. It's a <laughs> very risky sport. Then uh, you know, like you have to be very focused and very concentrated. And you know, when you do a mistake, you pay cash. Then uh, it's pretty sketchy. How does the training regime go in terms of practicing and? And obviously, you're going to make mistakes when you're, you're practicing. So how, how is that all controlled? Yeah, actually, we practice on a foam pit. It's like a swimming pool uh, feel of, uh, of foam. And we can try pretty much uh, all the tricks. And we work on, uh, on that for new tricks. And when we get to move and we know pretty good the tricks, we try on dirt. And, uh, and of course, when you crash on dirt, it's not uh, very cool. But, you know, that's a part of the sport and we have to deal with it. I've already spotted quite a big scar on on your arm there. Tell yeah. me about and ha, tell me about that. How did that happen? Um, yeah, of course, I got uh, I got a lot of uh, scars, and I don't like so much to speak about my injury. The only thing I have to say is I got way too much already. <laughs> of course, we want to stay away from the injuries, don't we? But tell me how much excitement you get from the sport. Then, obviously, when it goes wrong, it goes wrong. But when it goes right, it must be such a thrill. Yeah, for sure. Like the feeling that you get on your bike when you jump, it's it's amazing. And you know, I think I got a I got a perfect job. You know, I'm traveling around the world. I got a nice sponsor, and uh, I got a pretty cool life. And I hope keep going this way for for a couple of years. Talking of that cool life, I think you've just come from Mexico City, is it? Yeah. To Dubai. This is a series that goes around the world for you. Where do you love going to the most? Um, actually, Dubai, it's pretty sweet. Right I answer. Mean, yeah, I, I like, but you know, the thing is like when you're traveling so much, it's a bad thing, it's, uh, you don't have so much time to visiting, but uh, I think the best place I, I love to do is when after the event to go back home and just take a rest. <laughs> it was a very good weekend. 18,000 fans went down to watch the action. Hopefully it will be back in Dubai next year. You wouldn't catch Chris McCarty doing any of those stunts, of course, his hair was no doubt getting away. One thing he does like to do, though, is talk sport. Well, yes, he'd never catch Chris McCarty riding those Red Bull X fighters, would you? I well, can't ride a bike, Tom, so no. Can't ride a bike, can't swim. There's quite a lot of things. <laughs> You're almost like what our cameraman's T-shirt says today, lazy but talented. Uh, let's start with Yusef Al Circle. Of course, we had him on the show earlier on. Uh, this week, he's talking about becoming the AFC president, but Chris McCarty, can the current UAE FA president become the AFC president? Well, he is, you know, synonymous with success, Tom Bushell. He has, of course, won two Gulf Cups in his two separate stints as UEFA president, so he's a man that knows how to get the job done in many respects. Of course, he spoke very eloquently just last Monday, outlining his campaign manifesto. He is one of four men, of course, in line for the AFC presidency. So he'll go into that race. Of course, the election, Kuala Lumpur, May 2nd, high on confidence and with a track record to back it up as well, Tom. Absolutely. He has a good relationship with the FIFA chief as well, Sepp Blatter. Not that he has any kind of decision-making influence here, but 
having a good relationship with him can only help. Is there anything standing in his way, however? Because, of course, there are three other candidates and three of them, uh, sorry, two of them, are from the Middle East. Well, indeed, Tom, you've just hit the nail right on the head there. Two of the three rivals, indeed, coming from the West Asia region, one from Bahrain, one from Saudi Arabia. So that could count against Yusuf Al Circle, of course, when it comes to the voting, it may well split the vote from this region. And of course, the other point as well that Yusuf Al Circle was at pains to point out as well was his close relationship with Mohammed bin Hammam. Now, of course, he was the former AFC president that really stepped down in disgrace. Of course, you may recall two years ago those corruption charges brought against him as he ran against Sepp Blatter for the FIFA presidency. But Yusuf Al Circle has been at pains to say, listen, that relationship. You know, although we're close friends, that is all it really went for as, as far as. So he's totally avo devoid of any issues with Mohammed bin Hammam. It could count against him, but as I say, Yusuf Al Circle, his record stands up against across the board all of the other rivals. The favourite, of course, from Thailand. He remains so, but don't be surprised come May 2nd to see Yusuf Al Circle in the top job in Asian football. Well, whereas Yusuf Al Circle could be moving to Kuala Lumpur to be the AFC president, one man in football who is moving to the UAE is Michel Salgado, the former Real Madrid and Blackburn Rovers defender, of course, and Spain international. He's going to be the new director of football at Dubai Sports City. Again, we heard from him earlier on in the show, but he's a great appointment, isn't he? I think he is, Tom. He's, of course, a man that since his retirement has based himself in Dubai and a very popular man as well, Michel Salgado. Always talks, always has time to talk to the media. And I'm sure for the young kids growing up here and, and that love their football, Michel Salgado is indeed the right man for that job. So two positive stories in local football, but one not so positive story really is the Awakli incident uh, from just a couple of weeks ago where a fan of Al Akhli's threw an object from the crowd which hit the linesman on the head and gave him three stitches in the head and it's a rather big ban actually for the Al Akhli Football Club. Indeed the disciplinary committee just last week coming out and actually banning Al Akhli Football Club from their next two home games it means they will have to play those games away from the Rashid Stadium on neutral venues, Tom, and of course with that as well, they've awarded the three points to Alain, which in many respects is the most important of this. The 3-0 victory has been handed to Alain. It now means they're 11 points clear in the Pro League table, just six games remaining. The title's all but theirs, a second successful title for them, an 11th in total. And of course the other people that really do suffer from this is the Al Akhli fans. Of course, Al Akhli afterwards, what it pains to say, it was just the actions of one fan, but all of them have been punished. It does mean with these two games going to neutral venues, there will be no Al Ahly fans in the stadium for those two games. So they suffer as well. A real, a terrible incident on the night. The linesman was hurt. It was, it was just not a good advert for UE football. But it is an isolated incident. We must stress that. And fingers crossed we don't see any more of it in the UE football. Harsh punishment as well, which should put a stop to it. So, of course, we mentioned... Uh, Youssef Al Circle earlier on, and we mentioned Alain. Of course, Alex Bross, the Australian, plays for Alain, and his fellow countryman Harry Kuehl is in the region now as well. He's signed for a club in Qatar. He is indeed, Tom, the eighth Australian in this region as well. It's the fourth in Qatar. Of course, we already have for the four in the Pro League. Harry Kuehl this past week signing for Al Garafa, the Qatari club, a short term contract just until the end of the season. Of course, Harry Kuehl, the former Leeds and Liverpool winger, he has been without a club for now close to a year since he left Melbourne victory. So it's a welcome return to football for Harry Kuehl, of course, now 34 years of age. He joins Mark Bresciano, his, for, his fellow Australian international in Qatar. Fingers crossed we'll see Kuehl back on that left wing, tearing up defences as he did in his pomp in the Premier League. And fingers crossed we'll see Harry Kuehl as well back playing for Australia national team. Have you got a, a, an anti in Australia? No. OK, because no. you sound quite passionate about the Australian <laughs> football team. I'm wondering if you support them. I'm not sure. Better than Scotland anyway, aren't they? Uh, right, right, Novak Djokovic, of course, we know him well here in Dubai through all of the Dubai Jiu Free Tennis Championships. Of course, has had a good start to the season, but it's not going too well for him now, is it? No, it's not, Tom. This past week, Novak Djokovic in tears. It's a video that's done the rounds on the social media and, of course, on YouTube as well. Novak Djokovic breaking down in tears after his Davis Cup victory against the American Sam Querrey. He happened what it was, he turned his ankle third game into the first set, he manfully battled on, he ended up winning the match, securing Serbia a place in the semi-finals against Canada, but afterwards Novak Djokovic in tears, the pain from this ankle injury, he is a major now doubt for the Monte Carlo Masters upcoming this week, and it has to be said as well, he's a doubt for the French Open now, of course Novak Djokovic has said at the start of this season that really that calendar Grand Slam, it's his big aim this season, having won the Australian Open, it's now the French Open, but 
he's in doubt. The ankle injury is one. It's a serious enough one to have Novak Djokovic in tears, and we just have to cross our fingers and hope the Dubai champion is there at Roland Garros come May. I'll tell you what, watch out for Rafa Nadal, of course, back to win another French Open and what form he's in after his comeback as well. Chris McCarley for Sport360. Thank you once again for your input this week. We'll see you again next week. That's it from us. Yep, that's it for Sport on 7 this week. Plenty going on and you can find it all here on Sport on 7 every single week. We'll be back next week with more sport. Until then, I'm Tom Bushell. Goodbye.